my own system, I use a wire, a speaker cable called POC uh, speaker cable, which was made by JVC. And uh, it was popular, somewhat popular in the 1970s, and that's when I got it. But I liked it because it had a, what they call it, there's a, uh, a characteristic impedance that was, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it was somewhere around 8 ohms. And the uh, amplifier at the time I was making was, I had a feedback switch on it that you could set it so it had an output impedance of 8 ohms. And the speakers I was using at the time were the big timpani, uh, magna planar timpanis, which were 8 ohms. And so if you got 8 ohm amplifier output impedance, you got an 8 ohm uh, characteristic impedance on your speaker cable, and you got an 8 ohm speaker, uh, you got no reflections, and uh, uh, so that to me sounded like a technically really good idea. So I, uh, you know, so I've been a long proponent of, of the, you know, the uh, the low inductance, which comes with high capacitance. I, there's nothing you can do about that, but that's the way, it, you know, that's inevitable, um, you know, type of you know construction, and so. That particular cable, the Polk cable, was taken off the market in the 1970s, the late 1970s, because it blew up unstable solid state, in particular, amplifiers. Um, you know, that didn't have, uh, you know, they couldn't handle uh, just any load, you know, which is one reason why I make it a big you know, point that I test my amplifiers under any kind of load to make sure they're stable. Because uh, back in the 1970s, some solid state amplifier makers didn't do that. And, and virtually every tube amplifier maker didn't do that either. But these cables, you know, were notorious for causing smoke to come out of solid, big high wattage solid state amplifiers. And probably blew up a few speakers in the process, but um, um, but a low impedance construction in the cable, uh, you can't get the poke cable anymore, except maybe on eBay. But there are some other cables you can get. Uh, there's one that uses a flat, I think, gets goats or something like that. Gets goats. Anyway. Um, they have a, a laminate structure where one conductor is on one side of a thin mylar sheet, maybe, I'm not sure, and the other conductor is on the other side. So uh, the capacitance is very high because these conductors are flat, wide, and close together. Um, but the inductance is very low, and that kind of a uh, conf you know, that kind of a structure gives you that low impedance. And I'm not talking about DC resistance. I'm not talking about something you measure on a meter. I'm talking about uh, something that's called characteristic impedance. And it, it's, it's actually measured using high-speed pulses and looking at reflectivity uh, with a termination load. That's how you actually measure it. And it's complicated because you need a really, really fast pulse generator, and you need uh, a fast oscilloscope, and you need to be careful in the way you, you make the measurement. But, um, but it is a re it, it's a measurement that does have to do with um, um, you know, reflections. And I do think that even though the frequencies that they measure these reflections and stuff like that, is absurdly high compared with audio. And you think, well, you know, this shouldn't really make any difference uh, to the audio that I hear. But consider what happens when you have a feedback in an amplifier and you send this signal out to the speaker cable and it reflects, part of it reflects back because the terminating impedance mismatch between the speaker and the cable are not matched, and they aren't unless you 
really get them matched very carefully by, by this, you know, having this low impedance cable and it just happens to ma ma mate with the speaker, which happens to be a resistive load rather than a weird load like a crossover presents. But you know, if, if all your ducts are aligned and you get no reflection, that's great. If you get a reflection, which is, you know, likely, um, it comes back, it comes into the amplifier's feedback circuit, it gets propagated by the feedback back into the, say, the input stage of the amplifier, um, and it's got all this weird stuff. You got the time delay that it has going back and forth through the speaker with the reflection and this and that. It's going to do weird things. And so if you say that a, you can hear the differences in different kinds of speaker cables, um, I would be inclined to believe that you might be correct. Whereas you know, listening to the difference in certain other cables like power cables, well, there are certain caveats there, but uh, in the speaker cable, it's not really necessarily, in my view, what the speaker cable sounds like. It's what the speaker cable is doing to the feedback in the amplifier that's changing the sound because it's screwing it up. And uh, uh, so, um, anyway, that's just food for thought. Yeah, as far as, uh, um, you know, an engineer, a typical engineer mindset would say, no, you're not going to hear any difference in speaker cable. It's got low impedance or it's got you know, DC resistance, I should say. It's got, um, you know, it's just a wire that transfers signal another thing to one thing to another. How can you hear, hear a difference in that? Well, the the thing I just described, the effect I just described with the reflection and, you know, pulling with the feedback loop in an amplifier, yeah, it could do something. And uh, it's unpredictable what it would do uh, because different amplifiers are going to do different things. And therefore, I'd say it's probably, uh, it may not even be where you could say this speaker, this particular speaker cable sounds um, the same, or it would have the same effect on all amplifiers. No, it probably is going to vary. Um, you know, some amplifiers are, might sound duller, more lifeless with that cable, and some might sound brighter with that cable. Um, it's unpredictable. Uh, but I'm not saying this absolutely happens, but it's uh, what could happen. Technically, it's what could happen. Um, feedback circuits in an amplifier, especially a modern solid state amplifier uh, with high gain bandwidth product, these are wide band with uh, uh, elements in these amplifiers. And uh, so, yeah, it can, uh, it can do weird things.